Hi folks, Shell Buzzy again with that uh, good old House Smart uh, coffee break. And today we're going to be talking about something that, well, I don't think there's a lot of people that are not aware of Habitat for Humanity. And uh, they do wonderful things, wonderful things. We've been involved over the past and uh, I've got two people here today in the studio to talk about it. First of all, I got uh, Ken Miller. And uh, we're going to uh, say, hey, Ken, nice to have you here. It's great to be what, here, Shaw. What do you do with Habitat? I'm the Restore Director for um, Greater Vancouver. So the Restore Director, you're in uh, charge of uh, Restore Stores. Yeah, the Restores, yeah. Um, as we add stores, I'm the one that goes and finds everything, gets gets it going. Right on. And um, then our internal operations with all of our managers and how we approach things and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, and then we have Bella Dragis that's going to be... Uh, here as well. In fact, she's mm -hmm. sitting right uh, in the office here. Yep. And we want to talk to Bella about the volunteership. Yeah. Because building yeah. houses is what really Habitat for Humanity is yeah. all about. We're a volunteer run organization. Without them, we couldn't do what we do. Top drawer. I always say good, better, that's why I worry about the rest. Eh? <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, let's talk about the Restore Store. What, what is a Restore Store? I mean, I've been in them. I've opened uh, some of them. In fact, I was at the original Burnaby one when it was open. But uh, yep. tell the folks out there what it's all about. Restores are our social enterprise. Um, what we do is we take in gently used building equipment, building supplies, home decor, and we uh, in turn clean it up, fix it up, and we resell it to the public at uh, anywhere from 50 to 80% off of what it would have been brand new. Wow, good deal. Yeah, and in so doing, we're able to fund our affiliate operations. So actually everything that we do in the Restore pays for all of our overhead for our affiliate. Now, I know there's a lot of big contributors. I mean, when I say big, I mean mammoth corporations. and uh, yeah. uh, But yet, uh, some of the smallest um, businesses today contribute to Habitat for Humanity. And Who are some of the biggies? Well, Home Depot is probably comes to mind as the biggest. Yeah, um, for sure. We see a lot of stock coming from Home Depot. In fact, we picked up from about eight Home Depots in, in Greater Vancouver. And it all comes into our facility. Um, it'll be their returns. It will be um, if someone ordered something special and they decided not to pick it up, we'll seem to get that as well. Um, they're just tremendous to work with. What about with. obsolescence? Do they uh, get involved in giving obsolescence? Yeah, if it was a demo stock, yeah. um, yep, we'll get it. If it uh, was damaged on the floor and just has a slight little ding in it or whatever, it'll come to, over to so us. So someone will even have a warranty. Some will even have warranty, yeah, manufacturer's warranty. But what one thing that we do and within Habitat, um, we supply a warranty. Uh -huh. So we just went one up on, you know, what anybody's doing anything with um, used stuff. Um, if it plugs in, it's 30 days. If um, you say bought something and you ever run into that situation where you're not putting that in my house, well, we'll give that guy a little bit of a break and right. he can bring it back and they can find something else and they'll get a store credit for that. Right so, on. Yeah. Well, that's good though. At mm -hmm. least they, they have an opportunity yep. to return it or whatever. Yep. Now, what does it uh, um, really mean to the average homeowner? I heard you say up to 80%, but uh, is your stores, uh, what I found, they're merchandised just as well as uh, most retail stores. Well, we, we, hope, we hope to do, you know, give that a professional appeal to um, our stores. So we market. Um, we, they're clean. We're clean. We price it right to begin with. Um, if it stays on the shelf too long, it's all about volume for us. We mm -hmm. don't like things staying in the store for more than 30 days, and we start discounting and moving it out. So there's always something new. One of the terms that uh, comes up quite often is if you snooze, you lose. Because oh, uh, <laughs> I know I, I know that one. And, uh, you know, yeah. but, but really, when it comes down to the way it works, that uh, if someone was to have, let's say they have uh, uh, something given to them. Yep. But they have absolutely no use for it. Yep. And they'd like to give it or donate it to a very good cause. Can they yep. just bring it in the store and say, I can, I understand you're the guy that's uh, they can uh, do to that. talk to here. Can I leave this here for you to sell? Yep. Um, we have four stores. So uh, they're anywhere within our market, they can decide to bring it down to the store. 
and drop it off and we'll look at it. We can't take everything sometimes, you know, So, but we take just about everything. But I know you're opening a new store. We are opening a new store. And Tell we, us where. It's on Enterprise, 7977 Enterprise. That's so, Burnaby. Yeah, Burnaby, right across from the Global Studios. Wow. So, uh, as a landmark, if you know where that is. We'll have to get after them to give us a little bit of uh, shots on the arm down and around we that. We will, place. yeah. Can you imagine yeah. the block party we're going to have? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, get them organized. Yeah, I will. Yeah. But uh, how do you donate? Um, there's two ways. Bring it down to the store, and we'll have a look at it and bring it in, and, and that's all you have to do. Um, you can give us a call, and our number is 878-5050. That would be 604-878-5050. And um, you can go online, and if you want, send us some pictures. There's just a little form to fill out there. Um, we have trucks. We do we do pickups as well. Yeah, you see the trucks all over. The trucks are out in the road. Um, yeah, five days a week, just giving her. So. Right now, what what's, what sort of things uh, do you look for at Home Depot? You're saying that a uh, majority of their uh, product that goes into uh, your stores. Yeah, retail. so you pretty well take anything. Yeah, pretty much take anything. The things that we don't. It's easier to explain what we don't take. Um, uh, we don't take clothing. Um, we don't take uh, pesticides because we're not licensed for. It. We don't take firearms or, or munitions or anything like that, um, flares, you know. Yeah. Um, outdated stuff like hard hats and life jackets and those sort, sorts of Jams things. Jams and marmalades. And yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we can't sell eggs or anything <laughs> like that. But, uh, uh, but that's about it. Um, you know, we'll take uh, musical instruments. Uh, we'll take furniture. We'll take... Uh, Sporting goods, uh, we're really hoping to expand our sporting goods line, you right. know, because it's salmon fishing out here. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I'm but what so, else? We've what, taken what about vehicles. We've taken boats. We've oh, taken, is that right? Yeah. 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 What, what about if I had a, a bunch of uh, old aluminum windows that they, uh, they've they been replaced? Yeah. Aluminum for re-scrap uh, or whatever. What we do when we send a truck out, or we're talking to some of the people that are willing to donate, uh, we're doing a scrap metal program with Sister Steel, and we call it Scrap Drive. And it's a long-term uh, arrangement. They're really excited. The scrap drive people or Sensor Steel is hoping to build a home in each community that we serve. So when we're on the phone with somebody and, and they're talking about a donation, we say, well, you've got that uh, an old lawnmower or bike frame or anything like that that you want to throw in, be, you know, go ahead, throw it in. We'll be happy to take it. Wow. And I, so, can't you see, folks, Habitat for Humanity <laughs> we'll do recycle. great things. Yeah. And we like to bring great things together here on the House Smart <laughs> Coffee Break. And uh, But you know, uh, Ken, Restore stores have always been an interest to me. I've been into a lot of the stores. I've been up in the uh, uh, country, up into the uh, Caribou. I've been up into the areas of mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kelowna and Kamloops, the interior. Yep. And by gosh, I tell you, those are nice stores. Yeah, we have a really, um, our uh, one in Kelowna just opened up in just over in one year, just setting new records across Canada for a store opening. Great location, uh, West Bank or South Kelowna. And uh, the uh, Camelot store is doing really, really well. So we're really, really happy. And it's 100% profit. It is. Other than volunteers management now what have you the yep. volunteers are there volunteering management are there qualified management and i'll tell you they get the job done but you know we got to talk to uh, bella about this whole volunteership <laughs> she's got it down too i know she's yep. just wanting to get at it yeah, so i know that too yeah. we're gonna this uh, bring her on in here right now but i'd like to thank you good stuff good things Good, better, best, I'd say. Why worry about the rest? That's right. Okay, thank you. You bet. Thank yep. you again. Thanks, you bet. <laughs> All right. Well, well folks, uh, as promised, I have uh, Bella Draghi's with me right now. And we're going to talk not only about uh, different items that uh, the Habitat for Humanity really get involved in, like fundraising and uh, getting involved in housing. How do you qualify for a Habitat for Humanity house for an example? They're not free. This is not social housing. This is something that's pretty exciting. How are you doing, Bella? I'm good. How are you? Absolutely. Thank you for drawer. having me here. Oh, we, we, we love this kind of interview. So yeah. let's tell the folks all about volunteership. Yes, let's do that. Yeah. Yes. So tell me, how, first of all, do 
I become a volunteer? Well, it's very simple. You go to our website, you go to habitatgv.ca, and you apply online with the volunteer application form. From there, you give us as much information as possible as to what skill set you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. That way, when we do a call out for, especially for our government build site, our projects that we have on, on hand, events that we actually attend, as well as uh, the, especially for the restores. Right. We do need uh, volunteers at every level in that sense, but uh, when you fill out the application form, you give us information about yourself. We do a call out. We call you back um, depending on what area you want to volunteer at. Mm -hmm. And um, we put a call out saying uh, we need help with the build site. We need help at building the new store up. And we get volunteers calling us back saying, OK, I'm available uh, during these times. Can you schedule me in? And uh, my philosophy is any help is better than no help. So oh boy, you got that right. Yeah. So yeah. If, if we can work around your schedule, we'll do it. Excellent. Yes. That, that's really uh, accommodating the like, people that want you, to participate. You really have to think about, uh, I guess, the volunteer who really wants to give back and they are also working in a Monday to Friday job. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's harder to accommodate some people who can only have, I guess, the weekend hours available right. uh, because there's many of those uh, volunteers. What we need to have more or less are the weekdays where we need at the restore levels, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, Thursday as well. Um, so pretty much every single day at the restore, we do need volunteers to oh, help us yeah. out. Um, they serve but, too. Oh, they definitely do. You know, they get to know their, they, they are so proud yes. when they sell you something because they studied that product and uh, they know that product yes. when they're putting it on the shelf. Well, they see it as it comes into the store. So they see the new things that come in. They know where they've placed it. Some customer comes in and says, you know, I'm looking for this item. And so they are able to show them and direct them right. where they need to go. And then it saves them the customer's time as well as uh, it makes the volunteer feel like they've helped other people. And so at the restore level, yes, it's very much customer service. It's a building supply store. It is. And well, I'll it's tell more you, than if you don't have customer supplies, service in a building supply yeah. store now, Bella, forget yeah. it because you end up being what I call label readers. Yeah. And then that's when right. you're label reading, it becomes. What did you interpret from that? Yeah, that's right. You well, know. we accept everything at the restores, everything up into the sink. And so, um, including, uh, the sink. including the sink, we will Ugh. take the sink as well. But um, that's the beauty of, of working at the restore is that there's that, uh, I guess, that camaraderie that they come into the store. They have friends that they've made there. They basically are able to uh, feel that they're in a welcome environment and that we do truly value them, yeah. um, as well as at events. Like we have the BC Home and Garden Show coming up, and you're going to yeah, be I there get, as well. I get free tickets. <laughs> I got free tickets too. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a volunteer, I'll give you one. <laughs> but, uh, Ooh, it, those are 15 bucks a pop. They are. So they $30 are. a couple. So if you get them free, folks. Uh, yes. Yeah, all you have to do is volunteer. <laughs> Tell me, what about orientations? Well, orientations, there's different uh, orientations in terms of what you're volunteering for, but for the restore level, there's an orientation every single day, uh, and that's specifically for the restore. So you do your orientation, you sit down with that manager or assistant manager from that restore, and uh, they give you a breakdown of what to expect. Um, and that can be found on the website as well. So if you go to the volunteer tab at habitatgv.ca, then it'll give you where the locations are, the dates and times. We'll have that right on the bottom of our screen yes, as well. Yes, so. yes. And then for the build site, um, we don't typically have a regular orientation on an ongoing basis for the build sites. Those are actually uh, custom to the build itself because as mm -hmm. things come and progress, it's usually a daily orientation right before the build itself during that day so that as projects get accomplished and there's new tasks at hand, obviously the orientation is going to be adjusted for right. that purpose. That right. also includes the safety um, part of it. So like we a have forklift um, driving, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. In terms of like making sure you have your PPE, mm -hmm. that you have the she safety policy at right. hand. Right. Um, and then for the events, uh, that's another ball of wax. We have basically uh, orientations on uh usually the day of the event sometimes we'll be able to give uh i guess an email uh 
first saying, okay, well, thank you volunteers for signing up and this is what you're going to be expecting. Mm. And so that's usually on an ongoing basis and oh, it's that's per great. event. That's great. Now, why get involved? Now, the people who qualify for the homes, we made reference to that uh, at the beginning, that it's not social housing. These people qualify. They go through a qualifying process. Uh, and also, uh, when it comes to uh, getting involved uh, in, in building uh, the homes or working in the stores or whatever, how does that all come together? Um, well, if you're looking at family partners, that what, that's what we call a Habitat uh, families who have been accepted to be in the Habitat home. So those family partners have to go through an intensive application process. Mm -hmm. So we basically go through an application, then there's a house visit, and then there's many other steps beyond that. Once they've been approved to be accepted to be at uh, partner family mm -hmm. uh, they do have to do a down payment of 500 sweat hours and so that's basically um, and they have to accomplish this down payment prior to gain the key to the house mm -hmm. once they do uh, and they can volunteer by any method in terms of the build site to the events as well as I guess uh, um, the restores Right. And so that would be their down payment prior to getting into the home. And there is a lengthy process there. And our family services and uh, special projects director, she mm -hmm. would actually be the person to speak to about yeah. that. That'd be great. So we'll have her on one of my coffee breaks. And, that and, would uh, be fantastic. That. Her yeah. name is Claire Davy, and she's a fantastic woman, and she is great. brilliant. Um, and she deals with that whole department. Yeah. And so when she has families come on board and they have gone through the whole application process, then I will have them in terms of a volunteer. And we are taking applications for the Richmond Build site. So that's something that we have going, um, that's been out there in the public saying that if you are interested, again, it is a lengthy process. It's mm. not something that you apply and then you get right. a response immediately. Um, we, do have to, we do have strict guidelines we have to follow through as being a habitat. That's understandable though. But the main thing, folks, I wanted to get across to talking to Ken and uh, Bella is that uh, participating within fundraising nonprofit organizations, we do uh, here through the Shell Buzzy House Smart Home Services. And it's very important to us because we're able to do it uh, uh, with your help. And uh, your help is using the services, obviously. So I would like to uh, say uh, to Bella, it's really not a, uh, a no skills uh, uh, position volunteering because the skills are required, but yeah. lots of non-skill projects or jobs or uh, processes that uh, take place are there. If they want the desire to learn how to frame, want to learn how to do uh, whatever their, I guess, um, exp whatever their yeah. feeling is something that they, they never had. They're accomplishing. Right. Yeah. Uh, they can do that at the build site, so they yeah. get hands-on training, and then they have an expert next to them. Yeah. to show them how to do. Absolutely so great. Really well, is. you know, you've got uh, me um, and have had me for <coughs> a number of years now. And um, we're going to fix that uh, coffee too. I'm going to. So. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it's, we'll get some more water for you. But uh, folks, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Bella and Ken for coming out today and uh, talking about uh, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, their upcoming uh, new facility, which is going to be... Uh, uh, the kind of the uh, what we used to call it soft opening, but uh, introduction to the uh, neighborhood, introduction to the uh, the area, and uh, it's going to be great for you to see it because we'll yeah. have it here on the coffee break uh, sooner than later. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Bella, for being thank with you me. So much. And pass on my very best and uh, mm -hmm. to everyone. If uh, you see Habitat for Humanity anywhere, at a home show, uh, a street fair, or in the store, the Restore store, or wherever, give them 100% of your uh, requirements because I tell you, they have it all for you. It's just that easy, folks. Till next time, bye-bye.